If you haven't heard about Anchor by Spotify, it's the easiest way to make a podcast with everything you need all in one place. Let me explain. Anchor has tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. When hosting on Anchor, you can distribute your podcast on listening platforms like Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Amazon, and so many more places. It's everything you need to make a podcast all in one place. And best of all, it's totally free. Download the Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Hello and welcome to another episode of Real Talk with RJ. If this is your first time listening, please don't forget to follow and like, depending on the platform you're using. And if there is one, please hit that notification bell so you will know as soon as we release a brand new episode. Today we're going to be talking about a subject that many people battle with taking off the mask i'm not talking about the mask that they made us wear for covid for so long when we catch them all the time wearing no mask but they make sure we wore our mask everywhere we went i'm not talking about that mask i'm talking about the metaphorical mask that so many of us wear so that we're accepted in the society in which we find ourselves that's what i'm talking about so many people wear these masks because they want people to think that there's something they're not because they believe that if people were to be able to see who they really are, they might lose all their popularity, all their fame, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. This is a reason why for so often we see people on TikTok and other social media sites who are pretending to go and give food and money to homeless people, quote unquote homeless people. These are paid actors or these are people that really are not homeless who for some reason often are deaf and can't hear the loud, obnoxious noise of a paper bag in the background with money all in it and they have no idea the person's there until the person taps them and they turn around and go oh my gosh look at all that money and they're like it's for you come on now these people are super fake and there's so many more on tiktok and in the social media world who are fake and pretending to actually care about people and do absolutely nothing about it i can tell you what real people who actually care about the homeless do things and don't tell anyone about it because they don't do it for fame. They don't do it for likes. They do it because that's who they really are. So the first thing we need to discuss about uh, about this proverbial mat or proverbial mask is we need actually it should be more metaphorical mask. The first thing we need to talk about regarding the metaphorical mask that so many of us wear is why are we wearing a mask? And again. I'm not talking about the COVID-related masks and all that stuff. I'm talking about that metaphorical mask that we hide behind. Why are you wearing a mask? Maybe it's because you're not happy with yourself. Maybe it's because you don't think you're good enough. Maybe everybody that ever knew you or seen you thought that you weren't good enough and would tell you that. You're never going to amount to nothing, they would say. You're worthless. All you're ever going to be is a failure. You're a disgrace. All these mean things, I'm sure so many of you have heard. But just because somebody says their opinion, doesn't make it a fact. Think about it. For those of you who were alive back in 2000 and remember the year 2000 well, the news was covered with episodes saying, Oh my gosh, Y2K is huge. Get ready for Y2K. It's going to be crazy. Planes are going to fall out of the skies and computers are going to set over or reset and then nuclear missiles are just going to start growing up and or shooting and firing off and it's going to be Armageddon. We're going to die. It's been prophesied by Nostradamus and all these other crazy people. Then a bunch of computer program uh, software engineers were telling people you don't need to update your computer software. Don't worry. The computers are going to be fine. They don't need this update. People are like, no, I want it because I don't trust the news. The news is saying this stuff. I'm scared. I want to be prepared. And then 2000 came. Nothing happened. No planes fl- fell out of the skies. No nukes were fired. Nothing happened. And then the next day, nobody said anything about it as though it never happened. Because none of those news outlets wanted to admit we were wrong. So why did I say that? I said it to reiterate that just because somebody says something doesn't make it true. If you're not happy with yourself, why is that? Is it because you put so much weight and importance on the opinion of other people who can care less about you? Do you believe that your worth 
and your life and the success and value of who you are hinges upon the opinions of these idiots who think that they are the best in the world. I'm telling you right now, Kim Kardashian and the whole Kardashian family, and I use that name because it's a very popular name. The worldwide pretty much knows who these people are. These people do not lose sleep if you like them or don't like them. They are getting so much money and they can care less of what your opinion is about them. They don't base their uh, the value that they see in the mirror based off of your opinion. They know their worth. So why should you care about the opinions of other people? If you don't like I, me personally, I'm not super wealthy, but I guarantee you I can walk in a room with super wealthy types and not have to worry about what people think of me or what people are, are thinking about when they see me. Because I know how to blend in anywhere without forgetting who I am or losing track of who I am. I've had conversations with multimillionaires who have educated me in things I would never know otherwise. So I can blend in anywhere without losing my character and losing who I am. I don't have to fake to make it. If I don't know something, I will say it. And if I'm in a room full of obnoxious, obnoxious people who they won't explain things to me or about their culture, about uh, about the society that I'm, I'm learning about, or they want to sit there and down talk me, I'll just excuse myself. I have no reason to want to be around a group of people who think they're better than me. Why would you? Why would you want to surround yourself in an environment where people think they're better than you? You are special. You're incredible. You're amazing. If you are with a, a significant other, a spouse or a partner, who thinks they're better than you, sweetheart, they are not worthy of you. Or my brother, whoever you are, the person who thinks you're worthless can't see your true worth. Don't waste your time being with someone who is not worthy of you. Each and every one of you has something to contribute special. Each and every one of you is an incredible creature. Each and every one of you is created unique. Don't put any amount of weight or value on the opinions of people who can care less if you breathe or die. That's like asking a hungry, rabid lion. Well, lions probably won't be rabid, but it's like asking a hungry, vicious lion. Hey, do you think I'm worth living or what? He's, he doesn't care. He wants to kill you. He wants to eat you. They don't care about you. So why should you care about the opinions of other people who don't care about you? It's it's foolish. It's really foolish. And it's you're wasting energy and time in doing that. You need to look in the mirror. And if this message is for you, take a second, go to your restroom while you're listening to this, or go to a place where you have a mirror. Look in that mirror. Look yourself in the eyes. And with seriousness, mean it and tell yourself, you were put here for a purpose. You are not worthless. You are priceless. You are the only one of you in the history of the world. There has never been another one. And there will never be another one. You are rare. And every day you open your eyes, that's history in the making. Just because you can't see your, 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 uh, your potential now, doesn't mean it won't come. You have a destiny. You were created for a purpose. You've come forth in the time of earth where the world is at its worst. There's a reason for that. Because the strongest come forth when the times are hardest. In combat, your true warriors rise up when the bullets are flying fastest and hardest and the most constant. Then the people that you know want to talk a big, big game and everything like that, they're the ones that go run because all they were is talk. And that's the situation you often find is that the people who are pointing their fingers at you and judging you and saying you're worthless. Those ones have the biggest masks ever. They're wearing the craziest masks. You have people that hide behind all these jewels and all this money and all these name brand clothes that you can't afford. And they look down upon yourself. Why? A lot of these people have no idea who you are or what your value is. I will use an example. Eminem. I'm not talking about the candy. I'm talking about the American rapper Eminem. So many people looked over him. 
because of the color of his skin. They thought, oh, he's a little white boy. He's just another wannabe Vanilla Ice because Vanilla Ice is one of the earlier well-known white rappers. So they're thinking, oh, he's just another wannabe Vanilla Ice. You know, he's he's not going to make it. He's not he's not strong and he's not cut out for the rap game. Dr. Dre, a legendary American rapper, came up and vouched for him and said, give him a shot. People still said, no, nah, I'm good. I'm not, I'm not going to work with him. I'm not going to work with him. Dr. Dre said, fine, I'll do it myself. Eminem is one of the greatest rappers to ever rock the mic. Because somebody was willing to see his potential. But how many others could not see his potential? So just because you have a group of people who can't see your potential doesn't mean you don't have potential. You could be the person that cures the next virus or that cures a virus that we already have or a disease that we already have. You could be the person that makes something that no one ever, ever would have thought of making. You could be the person that cures the orphanage rate that we have out in the world. All these kids that are running around with, with no parents. All these kids that have no love in a home. You might be the one that solves that. If you're in a relationship and you were hurt deeply and you don't feel like living because you want the pain to stop, just remember that pain is not attached to your body. It's attached to you. There are so many people who are, you know, who are atheists who have seen their loved ones die and realize at that point that there is a spirit. There's something in that body. Because when that person died, that it didn't look any longer anymore like it was that person. It just looked like a shell. Your spirit controls that body. You are what controls that body. So if you kill yourself, the pain's not going to stop. It will stay there and it will always be there. If you want pain to stop, you got to work through it. It's not easy. But if you choose your friends wisely, it's possible. If you feel like you don't have friends, maybe you're just not looking in the right places. There are friends out there for everybody if you're willing to be who you are. If you're trying to be fake, you're never going to be happy. You're going to make everyone else happy at your expense. So take off that mask. Realize who you are. Look at your strengths. If you don't think you have strengths, look harder. Maybe you need someone else who actually is not your mom or your dad. Because moms and dads have a time, uh, have a tendency to actually tell you things that they want to tell you because they love you. Then there's some parents out there who actually tell you the truth. Like, hey, I love you so much, but, you know, and I believe you can do whatever you want. But I don't think singing is your calling. Like, you really don't have a voice. Or another parent can say, hey. I think you could sing, but I think the note you're trying to sing in is wrong. I think you need to find your note and find your your sound and you'll be able to actually make it. It's important not to build your kids up for something that's not possible. That's or that's not within their cards. Like if you have a child, for example, if you have a child who is uh, has muscular dystrophy, uh, dystrophy and as wheelchair bound, you, you're not going to go and lie to that kid and say you could be the greatest weightlifter ever. Come on now. You got to be honest with your kids. You have to be sincere about telling them that they're recognizing their potential and where they have that potential. Just because a person can't see it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Everyone has that potential. And it's so important to recognize that within yourself, that your true value and identity identity does not lie within the opinion or romantic interests of somebody else. So if you have a, a, a partner, a romantic partner, that does not mean that you're better because of that person. That person is supposed to magnify what is within you. You are still you with or without that individual. If you're at work, do your job. Do your job the best you can. If you don't happen to fit in with the quote unquote uh, cool crowd, so what? Why me? Why lose sleep on that? Find out who you are. I'm telling you, in my experiences, I'm not going to go go through every person I know and people with whom I've associated. I'm not going to go into detail about some of those individuals because it's not my story to tell. And this isn't the platform to do that. But some individuals I never thought I would network with. But I would ask some of these individuals, why me? 
like you know I'm, I'm kind of a square in a lot of ways you know I'm I'm not I'm not about that life that you guys live so why is it that you you and I hit it off so much like what was it about me that caused us to start talking and, and actually building a good brotherhood in friendship and they told me you know what man like out of all the people that I, I meet you don't meet a lot of people who are honest and real you meet a lot of guys who try to like fake the fake the funk and try to be something they're not just so they can impress me and get you know get my love and my respect and you know get money etc he's like you never try to do that so when you're real you will start attracting real people when you're fake all you're ever going to associate with is fake people and i'll tell you the warning about that you might seem like you're happy you might be happy you know being with fake people and stuff like that because it's easy or maybe it's it's stressful but there's benefits to it but the the, the false reality that you have to accept as a true uh, true result of that is that the longer you're fake the more you hinder your potential and you're never going to find out who you really are and what you were created to do until you realize that being fake is not the that's not the right way it's not the way to get to where you were supposed to be you're going to be walking far away from your destiny by trying to impress everybody else. In no romantic relationship should you make someone else happy at your own expense. You should both be happy. If you have to be somebody different in your, in your circle of friends, they're not your real friends. Or you're not being a real friend. Because friends are honest. Friends are real. So I encourage you now. Take a deep unbiased look at yourself and do your best not to see the bad look to see the good maybe you can draw maybe you know how to write well maybe you know how to put word problems together maybe you're good at leading at coming up with plans maybe you're a good listener you know who makes great listeners therapists who talked to so many veterans who have post-traumatic stress disorder after going to combat and coming back or like mentally messed up. People who listen to them save those veterans from killing themselves. So listening is a strong skill. People who know how to draw can work for Pixar, can draw and make some of the greatest money out there drawing. You know how to write? You can become a, a journalist, an author, I'm an author. I'm a published author of a book called Soul Guardian by R.J. Kurtz. It's a vampire book, an angle that's never been done before. And so far, everyone that I know that's read it loves it. And even the people that are out there reading it now, they're just they're shocked that I wrote it. And I'm shocked that I wrote it because it came out beautifully. But I never would have seen that I had the ability to write had I not really paid attention to the things that I enjoy doing. I learned how to write by reading words of people who were smarter than I did and learn and increase my vernacular and vernacular, excuse me, and help me learn how to talk better. I started reading these words and I learned how to do better grammar and punctuation because high school didn't teach me this stuff. They should have, but rather than actually spend time teaching me, they spend time babysitting us because California and the United States doesn't really care about how much you learn. They just want to look good on paper and then pay everybody else good money and to make it look like we're learning something when we really aren't learning anything at all. So pay attention to your skills. They're there. Maybe you just like, maybe you don't even realize what your skills are. Maybe you don't realize what your potential is because you're so focused on the potential and the skills and goals and, and, and talents of other people that you don't realize you have just as great of a talent. Like there's people out there that cannot play a single instrument and they're surrounded by people who can sing. But guess what? The individual that cannot play an instrument has an ear better than all those singers to put together who can identify the pitch and the, the notes that these people need to be singing in. An example of this is uh, uh, Ray Charles and Stevie Wonder. Both of those individuals cannot see. You know, Ray Charles could not see, of course. He's, he's passed away. And uh, Stevie Wonder cannot see. They're both blind. Yet, when they're in, while they're in practice playing their instruments and stuff like that, they would hear 
when someone was off. They had a better ear because nobody else could recognize it. But those individuals can hear when they were off. And they would say, wait, wait, wait. And they would they would not be able to pinpoint who exactly it was, but they can tell the direction it was in. They're like, wait, who is that that was singing this note? And then they would stop the, stop the whole practice and everybody else was like, oh, that was me. You're off. You need to sing lower one octave. So just because other people have talents that you don't doesn't mean that your talent is less important they might have talents to sing but you have talents to save a life they might have talents uh, to play golf and other sports you might not have talents to uh, play other sports but you might have talents to find talent and if it were for talent scouts your favorite basketball, football, baseball rugby or any other sport that you like would not be what it is or what it has been or what it could be because talent scouts are the ones that get these guys here or get those athletes to that team so don't down talk yourself don't downgrade yourself and just because you see your buddies out there getting some gorgeous looking partners and the partners you're getting are not as physically attractive as they are doesn't mean anything They might have some physically gorgeous partners, but those partners could also all be super high maintenance, uh, uh, materialistic individuals who would never be there for them if they didn't have the glamour, the glitz and the fame or the the, um, popularity, you know, that they have. Or the little pretty boy face. Those relationships often don't last because once they get to see the personality of the individual, they just get over it. They're like, I don't care. Get out of here. I'm I'm tired of you. You know, you're, you're just a worthless, lazy sack of crap but then you you might have relationships with people uh partners that you might not think are aesthetically as appealing as your your buddies does but guess what you're getting people that may be more real that are loyal honest and creative have great personalities and you're actually able to see the person and you have better quality relationships than your partner does i've asked a couple of my buddies this question because you know i would want to ask them these like you know, something that they, you know, I like to ask like creative questions just to see where people's minds are. So one of the questions I asked some of my buddies in, in a couple of jobs I've had, you know, in circle guys, I asked them, let me ask you a question. So let's say you, you crash land on a plane uh, with, and you're on an island by yourself. You can choose one of two women. Um, you know, the guys who, with whom I was talking were, were all heterosexual. So I asked them, you can have one of two women. You can have one woman that is exceptionally beautiful with an incredible body and she can do the most amazing physically intimate things that you can imagine but she's super lazy super stupid and that's it she's great at at all the physical intimacy stuff and she's great to look at but she's lazy and stupid or would you want to have a girl that is or a woman that is completely physically not your type physically unattractive to you but she's smart and she's a very hard worker. Keep in mind, you have no idea how long you're going to be on this island. Every one of those guys, or the majority of those guys, and I'm always surprised. I thought every one of them were going to say, you know, the person that's a hard worker and smart. Every one of them said, or excuse me, majority of them, and I I really mean the majority of them, it was probably closer to about, let's say like eight out of 10. And I've asked this multiple times to multiple groups of people majority of them always say the hot girl they want the beautiful woman i'm like you're dumb because seriously that like at some point you're gonna get tired of her just sitting on her butt and doing nothing you're gonna get tired of being the one that's building the house or building the shelter building the fire going to get water going to hunt going to skin the animal going to cook and then you got to feed her too so that she stays alive you're gonna get tired of her being lazy because those physical looks are just going to go out the door once you get to see that that personality you know, some of them would sit there and maintain, like, hey, I'm cool. I'll work. I'm cool. As long as she gives me all that, I'm like, you guys are stupid. And then the guys who actually think about the con- the, the the question, they would say, I want the, the other one, the hard work, because she's going to help me survive. She's going to make it more manageable for me. And guess what? As a result, you're more likely going to fall in love with that person because she's going to be, like, your partner. And that's ultimately, you know, what's real. Like, so... Just because it appears that someone has more than you doesn't necessarily mean that they do. Just having more money does not make a person's quality of life happier than yours. 
So don't be afraid to be real with who you are, unless you're a serial psychopath. So, I mean, if you're you know, a sadistic serial killer and you, you like to kill people and put them in your closet, you know, keep that mask on and also report yourself to a mental hospital or talk to your local cop and make sure you're honest and tell them exactly what you think. Because they would love to hear that story. They got some shiny, beautiful jewelry to put around your wrists. And uh, for those of you guys out there who don't think you're good enough, remember that you are. You're far better than you believe. Don't ever kill yourself. Don't even let that thought in your mind. Because you're worth so much more than you can ever imagine. Every one of you has a story of how you got to where you are today. And it, it started long before you existed. There are many Latinos here who immigrated and, and, and worked so hard to cross those borders. Like even before they, there were American walls there. There are people who sacrificed and risked their lives for a chance at a better life, at a better future. There are people out there who risked everything, who sacrificed everything. And, and risked their lives and their families' lives on a ship that was not guaranteed to make it from their country all the way to here, praying every day that it would not sink because the waves were bigger than the ship itself. You have a story. You're more than what you see in the mirror. Don't be afraid to show the world the greatness that is you. And don't be afraid to let your partner show you their greatness see it in them sometimes your partners can't see what's in them but it takes the eyes of love to really see the truth that is right in front of you you're so much better than a mask so don't wear one don't wear that metaphorical mask because you only limit yourself you're incredible realize that thank you so much for spending it another time another evening, another day, however, whatever time you were spending, I'm grateful that it was spent with me. This is Real Talk with RJ, signing off.